Hey everyone, it's time for another tech video by GeForce. It's Gary Fallon here. Um, we're going to talk about how to uh, install a PVL ignition. There's a couple different types out there, but what we're going to use right now is the brand new Molossi version. Um, it is a little bit different than the previous, but a lot of the same mindset will work for the older Molossi or even the stage six ignitions. So one of the first things is, you know, people go, well, why do I need one? So, so basically what happens is once the motor starts wanting to turn, say more than, I don't know, 12,000 RPMs on a consistent basis, the stock ignition really can't carry that kind of performance. Um, plus you're gonna get more, a better spark. You'll be able to, uh, on some of them, you'll have a selectable ignition curve like you do um, with the Molossi. And you can see here by the gauges, you can actually set a rev limiter, uh, initial advance, and you can also set um, a actual select a curve you can so sorry it's going in and out of uh, focus there but it's got three dials that do three different things so one of the biggest benefits is this is the rotor or flywheel whatever you'd like to call it compared to the stock one you can see that the stock one is much 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 bigger and heavier so that's one of the biggest advantages um, that you're going to get in that as well as you can have faster rev um, quicker revs you know, due to the significant weight difference. For the sake of the video, I'd already removed the stock um, stator that was there. So, but you can see the flywheel goes on. Um, and how would you get the stock flywheel off? Let me show you right here quick, put on the keyway. So we would have a, a flywheel puller, which is this tool right here. This is a metric 27 by one left. It's also what a Banshee and Blaster use. So if you have anyone that has a Banshee or Blaster and you want to get your stock um, flywheel off, you can go ahead and use this. Basically, it's a left-handed thread, so metric 27 by one left-handed. So when you screw this in, you're screwing it to the left. Okay, so once that seat's in there, you take your impact or your wrench and you screw this into the right. And what that does is it puts pressure and it pulls it off. So it's just really that easy. Screw it in so it gets a good, nice firm grip. And then, you know, turn this part here and it'll pull the other flywheel off. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff, installing the, the new ignition. So the first thing you want to do uh, on the Molossi is you want to get the, the back plate on. It'll only go on one way, so that makes it a lot easier for us not to make mistakes. This is my first time installing the new ignition, so I'll do my best not to make any mistakes. But here you go. So you have the open slot over here at say one or two o'clock. You have the dual hole up here at the top. You take your uh, Allen bolts. You go ahead and we'll screw those in. Here's one. And here's another one. Okay, so you got your plate in there, okay? The next step is you'll have your second plate, which is actually the stator plate. Okay, so that's the stator plate right here. And here is the new stator. So what I'm gonna do is put the stator plate on here with all the lines matching. And there's only one way you can put that on because there's a recess here. So it fits inside there. So once again, keeps anyone from making some catastrophic mistakes with their ignition system. So we go ahead and get the uh, stator. Screw it onto the stator plate with three screws. Okay, we got that. Let me get my uh, Allen key. So once again, we got the three Allen bolts. You want hands out of the way. Screwing that in. So we got one, two, and then we have a third one down here. And on the Molossi ignition, we're going to go ahead and put this up here in this direction. So that's where the slot is. So you want to keep that up here at like one or two o'clock. And then we're going to have, oh, I apologize. You know what? There's a, a fourth bolt that I did not tell you about. It was a secret. So here's the fourth bolt holding the stator to the stator plate. Please excuse me on that one. So there you go. So you can see you got one, two, three, four. Okay. And you notice that the stator uh, and the stator plate are, are slotted. So what's interesting about that is if I take it off, you have three places to thread a bolt. All right, so what we wanna do is we've got two longer bolts. They're gonna go in here. And you're not gonna tighten these up all the way yet. 
um, because you're going to need to probably adjust this when you set the timing. So we have one, we have two, one here. Apologize, my hands are in the way. And then we have a third short one, a little tiny guy. So he's going to go down here. Gotcha. So remember, we didn't make these tight at all. You can snug up a tiny bit, but you know, just you want to be able to make sure you can still um, uh, rotate the stator. So if you can't rotate it, then you got it uh, a little too tight. So you want to center it up because this is what's going to allow you in the future if you want to adjust the ignition after the uh, um, flywheel is put on or the rotor, whatever you want to call it. You know, this will allow us to make our changes. Okay. So What's going to happen now is there's a keyway in here. You do not use the keyway um, with this setup. So I'm not going to fully install the ignition because I don't have the keyway out at the moment, but you generally would not use that. Okay. So the next step is going to be we have the dial indicator. It's pretty critical. So what happens, you can see how it moves when you push the bottom up. And that's the same thing it does. Like when you're, when you're rotating the crank and the piston's going up, what we're going to try to do is we're going to find top dead center. And top dead center is when the piston goes all the way up to the top, and then it starts its rotation going back down. So you want to probably have to move the crank back and forth a few times just to get it where you're finding top dead center. So I'm going to pretend there's a piston in here. There's not. So we'll go ahead and screw this in if it wants to cooperate with me for a second. I guess it doesn't. Okay, there it goes. All right, so we're going to screw this in here. All right, and now we have the dial indicator. So the piston's gonna move up and down, and you're gonna, you're gonna see this. The gauge is gonna start moving. So when the piston's going up, it's gonna do this, and then as soon as it goes back on its downward rotation, you're gonna see it go backwards. So it's gonna go forward, backward, forward, backward, and then what you wanna do is you wanna find the point where it goes up, and right before it starts to fall, and you're at top dead center, and then if it's here, what you do is, wherever it's set at, you, then, you can then just rotate your gauge to, so if it's if this is top dead center, you just wanna rotate your gauge to match where the line is, okay? So if this is where top dead center is, you wanna get zero your gauge out, got, got that? I'll take this off real quick. So you can see your gauge and your line are at zero, okay? That makes sense to everybody? So piston goes up, it'll, it'll rotate this direction, and then when it goes back, starts to fall back the other way, I mean, it'll be like this or this, there's no piston. So it'll be like really close like that. Um, and then you're gonna have it, you're gonna rotate this outside bevel to where the line is, to where your dial, your indicator is, okay? All right, so our gauge is there. We have it zeroed out. It just happens to be zero here because there's no piston there, but it could be over here. It could be anywhere. Remember, just rotate the outside bevel, bezel to uh, the, wherever your, your orange indicator is, okay? And this is going to be in thousands, so that's important because you have to make sure that you're timing it to the right thing. Not If it says millimeters, you're doing it to thousands. you got to make sure you're really on the money. All right. So now that we have top dead center, we have our stator put on in the middle of the slots. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the timing of what the, 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 the protocol for the engine. So for the new Molossi, it wants it to be 1.5 millimeters, and it's before top dead center, which is a, ro a counterclock counterclockwise rotation. Um, stage 6 can be as much as 3.2 to 3.5. Um, the older Molossi ignitions were 2.25 to 2.5 uh, millimeters before top dead center. So, and I keep saying millimeters because that's generally what, how it's listed um, in the manual. So, but this is a thousandths gauge and there's about 40 thousandths, you know, in every millimeter. So at 1.5, we would say, hey, it's about 60 to 65 thousandths, right? You know, timing is, it's a guideline. So things can be different based on the fuel, length of your intake. There's a lot of variables, but just for guideline purposes, um, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate now that we have top dead center, we're, we would normally take your crank right here, right? And you're going to want to turn this. And if there was a piston in, you're going to rotate 
um, I'm rotating counterclockwise, so I'm rotating towards the back of the engine. And what would happen is my, so if this was top dead center at say right here, when I move the, when I rotate the crank back, this is going to start going this way and I'm going to want to make it go back. Um, if I'm at zero, I want it to go back to where it reach, reaches 40 on the gauge because that's 60 thousandths. Once we get there, we know that's where the timing should be. So, okay. So we were at zero. I rotated the crank counterclockwise towards the back of the motor, 60 thousandths. So I went over here to where it reads 40 thousandths. So that's 100 thousandths minus 60 brings you to 40 thousandths. Okay, so see where the dial indicator is? My hand's hopefully not in the way. Um, sorry, it's at the 40 thousandths marker. So it was back over here at, at um, top dead center, and I rotated the motor counterclockwise towards the back, okay, and it I rotated it until it was at 40 thousandths. I stopped the crank there, okay? I had to let go of that. So I stopped the crank there, and now I take my small rotor, my small flywheel, and this particular engine for the DRR and Apex, you're gonna look at the line that says B on it. Most of the older systems don't have lines this close together. Um, so just for the new Molossies, basically, with, remember there's no keyway in here normally. Uh, right now there is a keyway, so let me move that so it doesn't bother me. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is you have your line B here and you have your line B. So what you would do is you would put um, this on, you put your rotor flywheel on to make it line up, um, make the two lines line up. Right now, like I said, I don't have a piston in there and I have my keyway. So you normally would put it on like this, it would slide on. And I don't know if you, you can see that I have the B and the B lined up, okay? So that's exactly what you would do. And now you have your timing set. Because remember, you're at top dead center. You rotated the gauge back by rotating the engine counterclockwise 60 thousandths till you get to the 40 thousandths marker. Now that it's, sta it's stationary there, that's when you come on and you put your line B with the line B on the stator. And you put it on there very carefully. And then you would press it on and then impact it on from there. Okay? So now your lines are matched. So what you can do is you can go back and do the whole process over again. And you may have found by putting the impact on or pressing it on that, you know, now this is off by a hair. Now you can see the lines aren't matched up perfect. So th this is already going to be on. So when you go back and retime it, what you can do is now you can rotate your stator to match your rotor. So that's one of the good things. So you would do everything but keep the rotor on. And when you find the timing marks, if it's off again, like I said, you can just rotate um, the stator to match the rotor. And that's kind of why you leave um, the bolts in the center so that way you have enough rotation to advance or retard the timing as needed. So <clears throat> it's just like any other, uh, you know, ignition, even the stock, you know, it's got a drive plate just like that. So you'd put that on, then you'd have your three little uh, water pump drivers if you're using that kind of setup. So in here, and you'd still have your regular you know, uh, M10 by 1.25 nut to secure it. And once again, you put your three water pump drive studs here. These two holes are for uh, Allen bolts that attach the drive plate um, to the rotor. <clears throat> the only other things you really have left is you have, once again, you have your CDI box, which uh, does have the three different uh, settings. You know, we have a rev limiter. Um, we also have uh, initial advance curve and then we have eight different um, ignition curves and the manual can show you which one to use based on your CC okay so it's it's really uh, pretty straightforward okay so what we have here is you got a plug coming off your stator that'll plug in here directly piece of cake right everything that makes sense then you're gonna have your orange wire just like on the stock uh, ATV, an orange wire goes to the coil. So that seems to be a universal thing, an uh, orange wire to the coil. And you'll notice on the coil, there are two different um, spades. This is gonna require to go to the bigger spade. So the bigger spade goes here and you're set. You'll have uh, a black wire 
This is the ground, so make sure you put it on the frame somewhere where it's making contact, not too much powder coat. Uh, don't put it, you know, between uh, the, the gas tank and then a bolt on this side because it's not making contact with the metal. Just make sure that you put it somewhere where it's getting metal securely on both sides. And then you have your yellow wire, uh, which goes to your aftermarket tether. So you get your aftermarket tether plugged in here, okay? And that should be uh, about as much as you need to do. And then this other post over here, you can also hook to an ignition uh, kill tether here as well. So that's pretty much um, everything to it that I can uh, see right now. But remember, once again, you find top dead center, you rotate the bezel uh, till you can find uh, zero on the gauge. It's you know, so if I'll say if I set it here, then I just match, I rotate my gauge um, to match. Okay, oops. So if that's top dead center, I'm rotating my gauge. Sorry, there's no piston in there to kind of hold it in place, so I apologize. So you rotate the bezel to get to zero. Then you take the crank, you rotate it counterclockwise, um, whatever the timing is, make sure you convert it to the right thing. This was 1.55, so that's about 60 thousandths. Once you rotate the crank counterclockwise, you put the uh, rotor on with the B line, matching the B on here, you impact it, tighten it up, and uh, that's really the bulk of it right there. Um, it's pretty simple. Like I said, if you want to go back and do it again, your uh, rotor is going to be on already. So this time when you time it, you might find that the two lines are off a little bit. And this time you just rotate the stator to match the rotor and you're done. Thank you very much and I hope this was educational. Have a good night.